Are you looking to create a project plan in Google Sheets but don't know where to start, what kind of data you need to include and how to set it up optimally? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because I'm going to be walking you through every single step and by the end of this video, you will have a project plan ready to use or share with your stakeholders. So I'm going to start off by, and this is what I recommend that you do, I would add some key information at the top of the project plan just to specify exactly um, what this is all about. So firstly, I would recommend including a project title. And one other thing I'd recommend doing at this stage is just using some of the formatting options at the top of Google Sheets just to differentiate these you know, key pieces of information that whoever opens this document uh, may want to consume. So we're going to have a project title, so that can be kind of included in this box here. I'm just going to provide a border around that. So I've, I've put that in in B2. Then I'm going to put underneath, I'm going to do, so I've selected both of those cells with a, a left click of the mouse. I want to press Control on my keyboard and C at the same time. I'm going to go down to B5 and I'm going to contrast, and I'm going to press Control and V. And you'll see it's basically copied it across and it's also included the formatting as well. Here we want to have project manager. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to expand this out just to give us some more space. So here the title, the project of this title is um, creating a project plan and the project manager is myself. My name is Jeremy. Hello everyone. Um, so I'm going to put my name in, in here and I'll put PPM just as proper project management as an example. Next thing I'd recommend is adding um, some key project data. So uh, again, Control C, I'm going to go into to, uh, column D, Control V, and here I'm going to put project start date, and I'm going to leave this blank for now, and I'll show you why shortly. Make that a little bit bigger. Again, as you can imagine, I'm going to press Control C and Control V, and you might have guessed this will be project end date actually going to, I probably should have done this to begin with, but I'm just going to bold these out as well. Just to make that a little bit more uh, visually appealing, I'm going to make this a bit smaller. And then we're going to put one more in. Control C, Control V, and this is going to be project duration. Now, here's a good little tip. This is what I like to do in my project plans. So we are going to use the network days formula. So to do that, equals network days open parenthesis project start date so click in that cell so it's d3 comma and then we want to select the project end date so that will be d6 close parenthesis and you'll see it's zero because there's no data in here but what this is going to do is it's going to give you the number of days um, between the start date and the end date. So it's going to give you a duration as a, as a number. Um, and the reason I've used network days is because I only want to count days of the week. So business days, so Monday through Friday. So that's really a, a good tip. Remember that kind of formula. I've just kind of show you can see it at the top here. Um, you could just do, um, you could also do equals um, the end date minus the start date. But as I say, you're not going to get those network days and business days. So that's why I like to use this formula. So take a note of that and I would suggest doing it. Now we need to build out the project plan. It's what we're all here for. So the first thing I would, uh, the first column I would include, um, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to insert a new column uh, if I can. Uh, insert cells. Uh, insert column left, right? And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to start it here and I want to have a bit of space here. So the first thing I want to include is a column called WBS number. Now, if you're not familiar with that terminology, um, then essentially that stands for work breakdown structure. And that basically means, um, well, a work breakdown structure is a deliverable orientated deconstruction of a project. So in other words, it breaks uh, work into smaller tasks um, and it enables you to see the relationship between tasks and milestones. Um, and it just makes your project more manageable. And you'll see this as I start populating down below. So just bear that in mind. It might, might look a little bit unfamiliar for you at the moment. 
Now I'm going to bold this as well because what we want to do here is we want to um, make this more visually appealing and understandable for anyone who wants to, to have a look. So these are the columns I'd suggest you use in your project plan as a minimum. I'm going to build these out first and then we'll go through each one. I'm actually going to build out an example project plan for you. Um, your tasks and milestones might, um, you know, they, they may, well, they're likely to change and differ from the ones I'm going to use. Um, but it does give you a basic project plan template if you wanted to use it. But as I say, depending on the project, the implementation you're looking to, to roll out and, and your, your business needs, do consider that tasks and milestones will change. So these are the columns I recommend. So I'm going to have to make this a little bit bigger here. So we've got status assigned to a start date and that's for the task not the project end date we want a duration so we can see on the task level and we want a place to store comments so let's expand that out now i'm clicking on the paint format and i'm dragging this across with my mouse and that's basically copying all the formatting in there we want this bolded we want this to stand out a little bit and we'll put some borders on in a moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding some um, work breakdown structure numbers. So the first one is obviously number one. And this task, we're going to call this. So I'm going to be, we're going to call this project conception and initiation. And I'm going to use some kind of vague project milestones and tasks that are probably applicable to quite a few projects, just so you can kind of follow along and understand. And you could probably use it as well. So we've got I'll put them in first and then I'll walk through the other columns and the kind of information you'd want to put in there and to give you some tips along the way. So we've got research and that's a component of the project conception and, initi and initiation phase. We want to do some stakeholder mapping. We want to do a project charter. So these are the examples we're going to use. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to indent these across. And the reason for that is we want them to basically uh, roll up into project conception and initiation because all three of these tasks are related to this particular milestone. So to do that, uh, I'm looking for the indent functionality. Now I've just remembered that Google Sheets doesn't have an indenting functionality. It's not ideal, but there is a solution. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna select all of these. Um, we need to click on format we need to go on to number and we need to click on custom number format. And what we want to do here is make sure there's an at in the top and we want to add some spaces before it. So I think I did three there. Okay, and as you'll see, it's dragged these across and that's what we need here. Just so you can see the, um, the differentiation between a milestone and task or phase and task. And you could do other things here, like you could bold or you could even add some kind of lighter shading as well. Um, so that's one option, but I like to have the indenting here. Now these are, cause these are subsets of this phase. We want to put 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3. And this, this essentially shows the relationship that these are all kind of interlinked. You know, we can't complete project conception and initiation until we've done our research, done our stakeholder mapping and we've done our project charter. Next up, I'm going to do the next phase. So project definition and planning. And I'm just gonna quickly run through, I'm just gonna quickly type these in um, just so that we've got this built out. And if you wanted to copy and replicate, you could do so. Um, and I'll try and talk at the same time, but it is actually quite tricky to do that especially if I want to spell all of this correctly. So execution, um, I'm actually gonna bold these out just to make it more, more clear, uh, the differentiation. Um, and we will be, I will be kind of doing that indenting in a moment. So we want some status reporting here, which you will need to provide to your um, uh, stakeholders. Uh, we want some KPIs, uh, let's do some monitoring and some forecasting. We need to provide some project updates because senior management want to know what's going on. And we're gonna have a project management and monitor monitoring. And then we need to do project objectives, 
quality deliverables and effort and cost tracking. So you might even have predicted what some of these are in terms of how they roll up. So I'm gonna do that now so we can see this. So 2.3, this is obviously three, 3.1. 3.2. Now we're going to do 3.2.1 because these are subsets of the KPIs. So 3.2.2, um, 3.3, 3 4, 4.1, 4 4.2, and 4.3. And then at the end, we want a project closure task. And we might even want something like a project closure review that's what i'm going to put in there just to, so that's going to be five and that's going to be 5.1 now let's get these uh indented so again format we're going to go uh number custom number format space 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 at apply select the cells we want these these kind of indented as well again same process so I might have to scroll down a little bit actually, I couldn't really see it there. Right click, uh, sorry, format, number, customer format, space, 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 at, apply. Now these are subsets, so we're gonna need more than three spaces. So sometimes it's a good idea if you're doing things like this to make a note of the, the spaces you're putting in. So essentially each space is, is you know an aspect of indenting. So we've done three for the others, uh, up here so we want to have six say for, for instance because we want this to bring this out even further than the kpi so one two three four five six on the keyboard at apply okay and then this would be three we're getting there there's not going to be much lot more to do by the way once we get through this this is probably the biggest one but if you're creating a project plan then this is this is quite important you get these these tasks right so one two three at this is three as well i'm going to try and do this nice and quickly one, two, three, at, oh, I missed one. See, there's me saying I'm gonna do it quickly and I'll go ahead and miss one. I've got one more, format number, at, right, okay, here we go. So we've got this, it's all looking good. Now I'm actually gonna put some border around this. We're gonna put all borders. So that's looking much better. Now, project start date equals the first start date it can find in the project plan. The end date equals the last date it can find in the project plan. So I've just, all I've done there is equals and then done a cell reference. And that's gonna update when this obviously is populated and then the project duration is gonna update off the back of that. So you see, you're building automations to make this easier to maintain. Now, status, we're gonna have various different statuses in here. So another thing I'd recommend is I would do a key. So I'm gonna do it up the top. You can put this wherever you like. I'm just gonna call it a status key. Now our statuses are going to be not started, in progress, complete, and on hold. Now, the reason I put this key in here is just to give every stakeholder an understanding of what's possible Although, you know, you don't, there's a, you know, you don't actually have to do this. I like doing it. It just gives me an idea of what the status are, but there's also another option. So when you come into the status here, what we want to do is we want to put in some, some um, data validation. Basically you want this to be a drop down. So people have, or you have the option to select from a range of different options. So select the column, right click, uh, data validation, now what we want to do here in the, so the cell range is, is this sheet and it's this particular column because we selected it before. Now the criteria, you can list from a range and that's where you could maybe specify from here. So you could go enter a range, so you could just do that. Press okay, and then press save. And that's gonna give you the option to do this. And that's why it's good to have the status key. Now, as you'll notice, I've set it up for the entire column. This might annoy you. Um, if that is the case, you might just want to set up the data validation on the specific cells. You just do that the same way. You just select the, instead of selecting the column, you just select the individual cells. Um, that would actually annoy me. Um, 
maybe I'll, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to show you how to do it. One of the op other options, actually, maybe I could quickly do it because uh, it won't take me long. I'm going to remove that out. Uh, remove validation. Let's do it here. So the other option when setting up data validation is instead of having a, you know, a, a list that you kind of reference, uh, you, oh, what have I done here? Right click. Data, data validation is that you choose list of items and you type them in here. So this would be in progress, comma. Sorry, it wasn't, it was not started because the first one, not started comma in progress basically anything you type here is going to be an option so if you spell it wrong this is where you might need to go ahead and update it save now you'll see because I selected the cells instead of doing the column it's only applied it to these cells and again we get the same option so I'm going to put this all as actually we'll put we'll put drag it down all not started but I'm actually going to put some of these as complete because let's just say we are you know with with oh no I'll put that as complete we'll do the top Let's say we've completed initiation and we are now in progress on this as well. Just as an example of how this would work out. So assigned to could be a particular individual. It could be a team or, you know, or even a stakeholder. So I'm going to put in um, Bob Dylan here. Um, Bob Marley was responsible for research. Strange combination here. Uh, I can't think of any other Bobs. Um, SpongeBob SquarePants. It's getting a bit ridiculous now, let's be honest. But you understand what I'm trying to talk about here. And then let's just say the project charter was a team. So let's just say that was PMO. Let's, for some reason, the PMO did that. Um, now you can put in some dates. So the start date, I'm going to, uh, the start date, I'm going to put it in as today. So 07 06 2022. And you'll see that that has brought in the project start date here. Let's say this took three days. 07, um, what am I doing, talking about? 10, 06, 2022. Now, if we put in, um, you'll see this has also gone a bit funny and that's because there's nothing down the bottom here. So I'm actually just gonna put a, a planned project end date. Um, so this obviously isn't actual at the moment because we've not got there yet. But I just need to put a date in just to show you how this works. So I'm gonna put in um, the 28th of the 10th 2022 and it hasn't worked i worked out what the issue was it was the way as you can tell from my british accent it was the way i was setting up the date so i was putting this in in britain we do it slightly differently we have the month and the day around the other way in the states obviously this is the way google sheets set up for the states and that's why it wasn't working so it wasn't understanding the date i put in here so i've changed this the project is now three days long, so you get the idea. Now, what we can do in the duration column is we can do equals, and it's even given a suggestion. Look, I've pressed, all I did was press equals, and Google Sheets has automatically suggested what we do here. So we're going to do G10 minus F10, and that has given us a duration of 92 days. And that's because... Obviously, in the US, the month comes first, so that looks good. Now, what you can do in the comment section is you can just add any comments that relate to the particular task. So we could say here, Bob Marley conducted market research on competitors successfully. Just an example. So it's just a place to add some additional data as you're tracking along. Um, so just consider that can be kind of anything that's related to that particular task. Um, and really that's it. That's, that's exactly how you build a project plan. Obviously this is a project plan that's in, in place. So please do let me know if this was useful in the comments section down below. And if you could like it, then that would obviously help me and my channel as well. If this video was useful, please do subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of videos on using Google Sheets and project management in general. So with all of that said, I hope you have an excellent day.